How has reflection contributed to your leadership development? Uh, it plays a huge role in the process of design. Um, sort of, sort of outside of my own personal experiences, uh, we we bake into the curriculum um, constant reflection for the students uh, at Austin Center for Design, and so so. Uh, a typical agile or MVP or or always in beta process is one where you do stuff and then you test it and then and then there has to be there has to be a moment where you stop and you go like what just happened uh, and that is reflection and it's incredibly easy to skip that um, and to simply impulsively respond to data rather than interpreting it um, reflection is a form of interpretation and so it's an assignment of meaning and it, and it's going to be wrong sometimes. Um, and so it's easy to skip and simply use the data at face value, which will also be wrong sometimes, uh, but it feels safer. Um, I have found that, that the more interpretation or reflection that occurs, the more risky it is to build on that reflection. But when you do build on it, the, the, the um, more likely it is to, to lead to um, uh, large and magical and powerful changes. Um, and so... So we do a couple things formally in our curriculum that drive toward reflection. Like I have the students do a, uh, it was called something much more academic and they change it to a peak of the week, so a pow every week. So they film themselves and they say, uh, you know, what did you do this week about entrepreneurship and what did you learn this week about entrepreneurship? Um, and that simply saying it is often just enough to provoke that reflection. Actually watching it is huge. Um, uh, for me, I think I'm overly contemplative um, because uh, one, I have that constant just self-doubt that I'm not doing enough and I'm not doing as good as I could and, you know, I could always be doing more. And then, uh, and then um, second, there's this, uh, there's this idea that if I'm going to go out there and say large provocative statements, damn it, I better be right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I feel like uh, I owe it at least to myself to have that sort of inner dialogue about... Um, saying things like problems worth solving and uh, abandon your day job at a big corporation or a consultancy and go, go uh, you know, work on poverty and, the, and nutrition. Like, like those are big, those are aggressive statements, even to me. <laughs> and so, so uh, I should really have thought deeply about what it is that I'm talking about. Um, I do like to think of uh, active reflection versus passive. Um, uh, many designers that I know struggle with internal mood disorders, um, and that's that's a passive form of reflection. It's self-destructive, and it doesn't go anywhere. There's a form of active reflection through making, um, where you can um, you can it, it, as simple as writing down your your thoughts is a form of it. But you can also diagram your thoughts, and you can draw them, and you can create art and and things like that. And uh, it's a much healthier form of um, of reflection. Uh, and so I try to personally lead to the to the second.